why is space exploration an essential, plat an essential platform for international collaboration? And we'll start with you, Professor, Professor Neil. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to be on this panel and to the UAE for inviting me to be at this summit. Um, the 21st century is proving a pretty challenging century all around. There are a lot of threats to our prosperity and well-being wherever we live. For many of those risks, the answer to the problem lies in space, or partly in space. In many instances, we only can know what the scale of that challenge is by looking down from space, for example, in climate change or in agriculture. Um, and if you're going to address a problem, you need a picture. That picture, it must come in part from space. Um, once you've got that picture, you can understand what the problem is, you can do your analysis, you can look at what the options are, and when you've chosen your option, and you've rolled it out, you can see how well it's going and whether you need to adapt and to do that. Now, to ask one nation to do all that is too much. To, you know, the technology that's required, the, um, the deployment, the collection of data and the analysis, it, it really, and ensuring that it's a safe operating environment is really too much for one nation. So we need to collaborate. We need to collaborate across the piece. We need to collaborate in space agencies. We need to collaborate nationally in the commercial world, and importantly from my background, we need to collaborate in universities and academic institutions in sharing our research and development. Um, and then I think we can start to move forward. Thank you. Thank you for that. And Dr. James, what are your thoughts? Well, it turns out early on in the space program, uh, the Outer Space Treaty, which uh, was signed by 130 countries in um, 1967, really set the tone for international uh, activities to occur. And uh, in, in reality, there were so many things scientifically going on because the scientists are viewed as a community of the world already. And so now that's a framework for which their individual countries will allow them to work. During the Cold War, NASA scientists and scientists from the Soviet Union did work together on a number of, 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 of activities. So it wasn't uh, like them versus us, uh, as an example. And that's because that world of scientists love to work together, and that helps uh, that whole collaborative issue. And the Outer Space Treaty was that framework. Each country has all kinds of capabilities that are not duplicated in many ways uh, by other countries. And that makes them experts in certain elements. It's part because of their environment, the, some of the, the challenges that they've had to overcome in their individual country. And so consequently, when we want to do a mission, we want the best instruments. And those aren't necessarily from our own country. And that enables us then to pull in the international community. So it makes a great partnership because you have the right instruments making the right measurements. Uh, the scientific community is happy because it cuts across many uh, international boundaries because we're going to want to work together. And then the framework to be able to do that is already well established. Great. Thank you, Dr. James. Uh, Dr. Mohamed, what are your thoughts on the topic? Thank you. At the beginning, I would like to thank the UAE government for this opportunity. And uh, I'm glad to be part of this wonderful panel. Uh, with regards to the space exploration missions, uh, as everybody knows, that space exploration will involve uh, significant uh, uh, cost and uh, will require uh, significant uh, resources, such as um, expertise, infrastructure, funding, uh, as well as t advanced technology. So by sharing the, the missions together with other countries, we are going to share their resources as well as to reduce the cost in individual country. In addition, space exploration missions also involves high risk. And as my colleague just mentioned, by sharing the um, exploration mission with other nations, we are going to reduce the, uh, the amount of risk that will be faced by a single country. And this will make it easier for uh, access to space to, for all. And uh, finally, uh, joint uh, project in space missions uh, will be part of the diplomatic uh, collaboration 
and will build the trust between nations. And this, this could even be uh, part of the uh, international initiatives to bring peace to, to different regions of the world. Thank you. Mr. Koichi. Hello. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. It's my honor to be here. Last year at this time, I was still on board the space station. And uh, when uh, Sultan Al Nayeri arrived in the station uh, in March, I uh, had about the 10 days spent some time with him working together. And Earth is very small, and the collaboration is the key to advance human species uh, in a positive manner. Um, of course, space exploration, space activities. Uh, attracts a lot of people, a lot of governments, commercial industry, and then also private people, but it's really expensive. It is really expensive, and then we uh, are facing every day technological challenges and also financial challenges in space exploration. So I agree with everybody that uh, you know, we need to cooperate together so that uh, you know, by uh, sharing these challenges, technically and also financially, we can uh, achieve certain goals and outcome that will benefit not only the partnership or participating countries, but also the entire universe and then until the um, uh, uh, entire world. In order to achieve this international cooperation, it's very important to have a certain set of uh, uh, common goals and values, such as Accor uh, Artemis Accords, that UAE is part of that for exploration beyond the lower orbit, and also for the space station program, the intergovernmental agreement, the IGA of ISS, is uh, very essential. Uh, in the human space exploration, we have encountered technical and also geopolitical challenges that we are facing today. For example, technologically, technically, we had a Space Shuttle Columbia accident, but uh, because of the IGA, very powerful IGA, we were able to continue the International Space Station program. So because of this partnership, we have been and we will be uh, surviving those technical and the financial challenges. And uh, so that's why we need to have this balance of uh, cooperation and competition. But uh, through, through this uh, legal framework and the common value and goals, uh, we were able to continue the space exploration with the international exploration, with the international support. Thank you for mentioning um, the, the fact that countries need to have a common goal to work together. So that brings me to the next question. How can we harness this powerful tool for, col for collaboration from countries that are new to the space sector to those that have been doing this for years. Um, and I'll start with you, uh, Professor Neil. Thank you. Um, nobody has a monopoly of bright ideas. And it doesn't really matter if you've been operating in space for 60 years or six years or six months. Everybody brings something to the party. And, and everyone can learn from that, and as we talked about in this collaboration. And it's not just in the mission and the, the post-mission. I and a colleague from the University College London have been very privileged to work with the UAE Space Agency um, on the EMM HOPE program and now moving to, to the MAX program. And we are learning all the time about how you take that sort of knowledge you gain and help it generate and transform a society. So it, it's very much a, a combination and the sum of all the parts is much greater than the individuals. That's very true. And uh, Dr. James? A couple things I want to mention in this particular area. Yeah, when I started in the 70s uh, as, a, as a scientist, there were only a couple space agencies. There are now more than 70 countries that are involved in the space business with many different agencies now that are cropping up. So these countries now are becoming much more space aware. So there's all kinds of opportunities to create partnerships. Uh, one of the big partnerships that NASA, for instance, is, uh, has, is in the process of developing is joining a group of nations together to go to the moon and then on to Mars through a program called uh, Artemis. Uh, NASA's already launched the first Artemis mission to test some of its systems uh, that will carry humans to uh, the moon that worked very well. It's in the process now of of creating um, the Artemis 2 and 3 and 4, uh, but within the matter of a few years, we'll actually have humans living and working on the surface of the moon uh, for, for a wonderful period of time. Unlike Apollo, Apollo was done with US funds, uh, stayed a couple days, and then returned. And the concept is, with the Artemis Accords, for which we now have 35 signatures, with Greece joining us this week in the Artemis Accords, uh, to work together 
to share costs and to uh, be part of the adventure, not only the engineering challenges that will occur that create spin-offs that help their individual countries, uh, but building instruments and capabilities uh, where scientists can join into the data analysis on a global basis uh, to looking at the resources that are on the moon, things that may be needed uh, here on Earth later on as we deplete uh, some of the resources such as platinum group metals and a number of those things. So uh, these nations now that are becoming more space aware can get access to data that's being taken uh, uh, of the globe uh, and be able to uh, bring their scientists along. They can join uh, different missions that match their goals and their abilities. Uh, they can be part of grand plans like uh, the Artemis program. So there are many different ways that new nations can participate in, in the next step in the space. It's very exciting. And uh, Dr. Mohammed, what are your thoughts on this? To be honest, uh, <coughs> Bahrain is one of the nations which is considered as a newly emerging uh, country in the space sector, but we benefited a lot from the uh, collaboration, international collaboration, especially with our uh, neighbor countries, such as the United Arab Emirates, Saudi the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I mean. Also, we benefited from our collaboration through bilateral uh, uh, agreements that we signed with UK. And we have many projects funded totally by the UK government, as well as with the United States through Artemis, as well as with the, with the Indians, ISRO, where we uh, sent some of our engineers to their laboratories. And uh, also, we are um, keen to and open for any type of collaboration that is provide us with capacity building as well as with uh, knowledge transfer and technology transfer because one of the challenges now that facing this uh, international collaboration is the knowledge transfer. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, government restrictions uh, for, from the uh, spacefaring nations that uh, stop the, the knowledge transfer and the only window that we have now uh, which is not um, totally open for the newly emerging uh, nations in the space sector is the private sectors. So private sector are uh, playing a vital role in transferring technology and make things cheaper and easier. But we have also, when we are talking, even we are in uh, government conferences, as we, as we know, our government focus conference, we have also to not to ignore the private sector because they can, can contribute um, um, in a huge way to promote the, the space sector and uh, foster the international collaboration. Yeah, that's very true. And a lot of emerging countries are begin putting a huge focus on the private sector these days. So it's good that you mentioned that. Uh, Mr. Koichi. Yeah, so so uh, I think I have more gray hair than many of you here. So I remember the Apollo 11 lunar landing when uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. I, I had a strong longing for flying in space, but there was no Japanese astronaut to them. There was no Japanese rocket. Or we don't have a, a space program. But thanks to the international cooperation, I was able to fly five times in space, and I worked with a UAE astronaut. So it was great. <laughs> so what those experienced countries can do to the new, uh, newly spacefaring nations? I think that's uh, we, I mean, the, not, uh, the advanced nations, uh, experienced nations can uh, leverage their assets in space and also the ground in order to provide the opportunities uh, for the uh, new spacefaring nations to actually conduct space missions. And uh, some of the examples is that uh, for Japanese, uh, Japanese Kiba module on the International Space Station, when uh, um, Al-Mansuri flew in space, uh, he did an education program in the Japanese module with the uh, UAE uh, students, uh, you know, directly, they're talking. And uh, so that was a new opportunity for the uh, people in the UAE to experience the actual conversation, actual education from space. And uh, also, uh, United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs is playing a key role in providing opportunities for like a satellite deployment. Uh, UN USA has a program called Kibo Cube that is uh, jointly working with JAXA. Um, uh, we launch or we help develop the new space faring nations to develop small CubeSats and uh, launch it and deploy it from the space station. 
and so that they can experience the entire phases of uh, space uh, satellite development. So uh, those experienced countries and this in uh, international organizations like the UN can provide this opportunity because that will eventually lead to the uh, you know, enhancement in education and science technology and that will lead up to the growth of these uh, science and technology in the, you know, those new uh, space-faring nations. So I think the governments and then international organizations can help in achieving the, those uh, uh, new goals in the new space-faring nations. If I may add a little bit to that, uh, this, this is just such a wonderful era for which the miniaturization activities have gone on and things have gotten smaller and you can indeed the CubeSat form is, is just not only a wonderful teaching environment but it actually can be very productive and make tremendous measurements uh, of value uh, to individual countries or many countries uh, that can utilize that data. So the technology now is just ripe for countries that are coming in to be able to figure out their next steps and get involved in these, some of these beautiful small sats. Thank it's you. It's just a perfect time. And so uh, what are your thoughts on what the ideal way for governments to work together is towards har harnessing or to, towards answering questions about the universe and advancing humanity. Um, and I'll start with you, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> well, uh, you get co you, I think you get better cooperation when you develop trust, mm -hmm. when you have a common understanding of what the challenge is, and recognizing that those challenges I talked about at the beginning, then they're, they're not challenges that necessarily recognize national boundaries. They are transnational, they're global challenges, and understanding that the benefits of that collaboration will, will help all mm -hmm. and advance all, and there's opportunities for all in that. Um, but quite often, things start on a regional basis. Um, we've seen it uh, in Europe with the European Space Agency, we've seen it in Asia, we're seeing it here in this region now with what is going on, um, with Bahrain, with Oman, uh, with Saudi Arabia, and of course here in, in, in the UAE. And it's building that confidence that um, you, know, you can work together, you've got a common aim, a common objective, and uh, as the colleagues have said, you know, once you get there and start doing the job, it doesn't really matter where you come from, because you've got, you've, you've got a common interest in, in getting the outcomes you're seeking. Right. That's a very good point. Well, from my perspective in particular, which is a scientific perspective, the uh, way we can work together, of course, is through common scientific goals. Um, it's easy for me to see in my 42 years at NASA is there's so many fantastic scientific things that can be done uh, and they're good things, but NASA doesn't want to just do good things. It wants to do the top things. It wants to answer fundamental questions. Uh, it's, it's in that drive that has enabled us to understand climate change understand that what's happened on Venus can happen on Earth. Our abilities to predict how the world will evolve are because of these scientific drivers, these top fundamental questions. This unites so many scientists across the goal, uh, globe uh, into the common themes and allows important research uh, to be identified and then uh, determined how to uh, collect the data and what are the measurements that are going to be made that will actually answer those questions and then begin the process of working together in multinational environment to be able to develop those satellites that can make those measurements and answer those top questions. And it's when we do that, new things are found out and new questions arise and it just feeds the entire process over and over again. So something like a global decadal survey that Correct. all countries contribute to. Yeah, in fact, NASA goes through a process uh, for which uh, we ask the National Academy of Sciences at, uh, in, in the United States, the top scientific minds, to identify those top scientific questions. And once that's done, uh, they, they give a report back to NASA saying here's what we call a decadal, which means these are the top things we'd like to see each of your science disciplines accomplish over a 10-year period. That's why they're called decadals. And so uh, being open like that to be able to identify those things um, it really uh, starts a conversation internationally about how other 
other countries may feel in terms of being able to, yes, that's an important question. We want to be involved in those. We want to be able to make measurements. We'd like to join you. And then, and then uh, those uh, nations get together through bilateral, multilateral uh, uh, working together uh, to accomplish those new missions. And Dr. Hamid, what do you think about that? So I will focus first on the national level. <clears throat> At national level, I believe the governments uh, should focus on investment in the R&D, in education, infrastructure. And once this has happened, I think then, then they can be open for any international collaboration. Uh, we cannot go for international collaboration where I lack the expertise or even the, 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 the citizens, my citizens are not capable or, or the community are not even supporting the space exploration or they don't appreciate the importance of space and space technology. This is at national level. Uh, at the international level, I think countries must be open for the international collaboration for the reasons that we mentioned earlier. In addition the, to that, I think the international organization, for example, the United Nations represented by the ANOSA, they have to play a vital role because it's part of their uh, goals to support international collaboration and uh, to spread the awareness of the, uh, the importance of space and space technology and to show its benefit to the humanity. And as my colleague mentioned um, at the beginning, um, which is one of the most important examples today where uh, we were talking a few months ago about the COVID-28, about the global warming, climate change, all these environmental impacts cannot be handled in addition to the SDGs without utilizing the space and space technology. Right. So I think um, this is how the government should uh, work toward the SDGs, and the time is running. We are running very short of time now, and we have to focus and bring uh, all the initiatives, unify them, save the resources, and try to find solution to protect our, the only planet we have, the Earth. That's very true, thank you. Uh, Mr. Koichi. Yes, yeah, so uh, what is the ideal way to uh, cooperate in, in space exploration. Um, maybe it's a repeat, but I think uh, sharing this uh, technical challenges and then financial challenges that we're facing every day, uh, sharing that challenges and then uh, try to achieve the goal uh, and outcome that benefit the entire world is uh, the ideal way, I believe. And also, I think it's important uh, to be a unique a country of a unique capability. Um, Japan started in the space exploration much later than compared to the big countries like the United States, uh, former Soviet Un Union, and uh, no, uh, no country needs to be number one, but I think it's important that uh, we will try to strive to be uh, an only one mm -hmm. instead of number one. Because uh, by having a unique capability as an only one, uh, whether it is a scientific instruments or launching capabilities or uh, some probes that we can send to other, other planets and stuff like that, uh, by having a unique capability that is unique to the country, that can be a strong asset for the country to participate in an international uh, effort in exploration. And uh, by bringing to the table of the unique capabilities that uh, each and every country has acquired. I think that's the ideal way to collaborate internationally. And that's how we can all benefit by cooperating together. So um, yeah, uh, get to an only one instead of number one. I think it's a very important part of uh, exploration. That's a good point. And I think you all mentioned examples of ways that international collaboration is happening um, with space. But do you believe that it's being utilized to its maximum potential, uh, and can you tell us why or why not, um, Dr. Neal, <laughs> or Professor Neal, sorry. I, I think the school report would say something along the lines of making good progress, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. Um, and we've got to use space as a catalyst to break down some of the geopolitical barriers we're facing today, because the consequences of not doing so are pretty cataclysmic in the sense of some of those challenges that need the knowledge from space, need space to be a safe environment to operate in, and we don't want to move the geopolitics of, of Earth up into, into, into space. So um, more work to be done, I think. Yep. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. Uh, there's plenty of room for improvement, uh, but 
Uh, you also have to recognize we, we have a basis of, um, uh, that we work from that's worked extremely well. I, I can't think of uh, anything that I've been involved with at NASA in my 42 years that it's been in, uh, of an international nature that's it's been a real disaster. I mean, there's been so many fantastic things that come from that. Uh, the key is, I think, uh, a greater recognition uh, globally that we must use space appropriately. I firmly believe that, uh, that our species, the human species, is not going to be able to survive very long on this planet if we don't in, uh, get together and be able to utilize space uh, uh, for peaceful means and together. Uh, so once that fundamental principle comes across and it becomes an imperative, not a nice to have, but uh, if we're gonna make it, we gotta work together, and this is indeed, um, uh, we know how to do it, let's, let's get busy and do it. Dr. Mohammed? Uh, I think there is uh, uh, plenty of opportunities for improvement. We will never reach the maximum potential, and this is a healthy thing. Um, but we have to take care about the challenges that facing reaching the maximum potential. Uh, for example, um, about technology and technology transfer, uh, geopolitical challenges and tensions sometimes will play a major uh, role in um, uh, breaking the international collaboration and uh, will stop some nations from uh, getting access to space and the space technology, as well as funding, which is one of the major challenges that facing most of the uh, space agencies these days and the space sector in general. But uh, uh, I agree with my colleagues, uh, we can um, find a solution and we can um, uh, collaborate in order to uh, overcome all these challenges. Thank you. And Mr. Koichi? Yeah, I think uh, the governments have done a lot uh, in the cooperation in uh, space exploration, uh, science missions, and human missions, and I think we, we should do more. Uh, in order to be able to uh, continue activities more uh, Sustainably, I think it's very important to, to, to take care of uh, orbits. Uh, I know last year when I was on board the station for about six months, uh, we did uh, what's called the debris avoidance maneuvers four times. And uh, I flew five times, and each time it looks like uh, we have to maneuver more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of junk on, in space, and we need, we need to kind of take care of that environment so that we can continuously uh, u utilize that, uh, the orbits. And then uh, one thing that the governments have done a lot, and we're doing a lot more uh, continuously, but the one thing that I personally did not predict in this uh, space exploration is what, is what the private sectors can do in order, in addition to the governmental uh, collaboration, uh, by having uh, private pet sectors involved, uh, I think it accelerates the activities. For example, um, like uh, we had the Saudi astronauts flew uh, on the Axiom 2 missions, and this time Axiom 3 mission uh, had the first astronaut from Turkey. And uh, through NASA, you know, JAXA has been cooperating, and I was able to fly because of this collaboration to government, governmentally. But with a commercial partner's participation, I think it expands this co collaboration in a more timely manner, in a sense. So intergovernment agreement, intergovernment collaboration, as well as a commercial partnership between the commercial companies and then also the intergovernmentally, I think that is a key, this balance of commercial sector's participation in, in, in addition to the governmental agreement. I think it really accelerates this uh, inter, international efforts. Great. So that brings us to the end of the session. Um, I think we heard some great points about the importance of inter international collaboration in space exploration and the work that's left to be done uh, for governments and ex great examples of how we've been collaborating so far. So thank you to our esteemed panelists and thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.